I hope you had an amazing Labor Day. And now that the unofficial end of summer has come to a close, it's time to get down to business, at least in the real estate world, that is. In this video, we're going to go over the single family economy markets in the state of Massachusetts. We'll also do an interest rate update. And let's talk about why interest rates drop so much. It's not great news, so be prepared. Hi, I'm Jeff Chubb. I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent, and I've sold more than a thousand homes. If you have any questions about the real estate market, then know I am here to help. August, it's come to a close. This is traditionally one of the slowest months of the year, but this is generally when we start seeing activity pick up now. The kids are back into school and people are done with their summer vacation. I'm not sure what to expect with this fall market. Last year was one of the worst fall markets I've ever seen. I'm anticipating this fall market to be better than last year, but, well, nothing to write home about. I'm looking forward to seeing what lies ahead, quite frankly. But now, let's jump into the single-family market staff. We currently have 3,689 houses on the market. As planned, inventory pulled back. This is 100% what we expected coming into Labor Day. But get ready for a surge of new listings coming on the market. This coming week last year, inventory levels jumped by 11%, and I'd expect more of the same this year. Year over year, we saw a big decrease in the inventory levels, and this year, it was no different. The difference between units on the market today and today last year, however, did decrease even more. We now have 1,054 fewer houses on the market than we did the same time last year. I know what you're thinking. That's a lot of units, but to put this number in perspective, we had 1,855 unit difference in the beginning of August. Inventory trends were not favorable to sellers in August. If you're a buyer, then this should put a smile on your face as we go into this fall market. Will next week we crack that less than 1,000 unit difference? Man, my only time's gonna tell. We had 539 newly listed single family homes this week. Now this means we were 10.5% off this week in newly listed homes as there were 602 homes that came on the market this week last year. It seems that about 10% mark is what to expect for the percentage decrease in new listings based off of, well, the last couple weeks of data. Now, the four-week rolling average is 895 units, but we knew that this is the week where we'd be well below that four-week rolling average. And we also know that next week will be, well, well above that average. Under agreements fell off of a much steeper ledge than new listings did when compared to last year. We had 782 single-family homes go under agreement this week. Now, this is compared to the 960 units that went under agreement this week last year. This means that under agreements were off by 18.5% compared to year over year. Now, we had talked about this in the past weeks, but it's this imbalance between new listings and under agreements, which is fueling the rapid decrease in the inventory gap. The question at this point is if it will continue as we head into the fall market. Now, the four-week rolling average is 860 units, so under agreements were below this number. But again, it's nothing to be concerned about as it was this same time last year. Now, there were 892 single-family homes that closed last week for an average sales price of $756,000 and a median sales price of $625,000. Months of inventory, this is how we determine what type of market we're in. Zero to five months is considered a seller's market. With the closer you can get to zero, well, the more aggressive of a seller's market that it is. Now, this week, months of inventory dropped to 1.23 months compared to last week's 1.34 months. This continues to indicate that it is a very strong seller's market. Real quick, it's my shameless plug. I wanted to mention that if you are thinking about buying or selling a house, then it would be a true pleasure to help. Now, on to the condo market. We have 1,996 condos on the market as of Monday. Like the single family market, inventory was expected to drop this week, but I have to say, I didn't think it would drop this much. But if you are a buyer, then that may be a great thing. The inventory difference shrinking has been a story that we have become all too familiar with in the last month. So to see the difference expand a little bit might be a cause for celebration. We now have an inventory difference of 243 units, which is up from last week's 208 unit difference. To put this all in perspective, that was a 611 unit difference at the beginning of August. Now there were 184 condos that came on the market with the four week rolling average of 393 condos. But as we said earlier, the four week rolling averages aren't extremely helpful this week. But look at that dip in the blue line. I won't lie. I went back and double checked the amount of condos listed for this week, 184 for the entire state of Massachusetts. We listed 21.7% fewer condos this week than we did the same week last year. But while new listings were way off, under agreements were right there with last year. There are 317 condos that went under agreement this week. Last week, that number was 321, while the four-week rolling average is 343 units. So we were below that average, but in line with the week before. Now, this week, last year, there were 330 condos that went under agreement. 
This means that we were only 3.9% off of last year's pending activity. There are 341 condos that sold this week for an average sales price of $625,000 and a median sales price of $530,000. And then that month of inventory, it dropped to 1.52 months from last week's 1.68 months. We can all thank the big decrease in inventory for these drops in the months of inventory. It will rebound next week. Do you like hearing about what's going on in the Massachusetts real estate market? Then can you do me a huge favor? Can you hit that like button as it helps with that YouTube algorithm? And well, subscribing, <laughs> that one doesn't hurt either. So please subscribe. Interest rates. It was a great week for home buyers due to interest rates dropping off a cliff. They were down more than a quarter of a point last week. Now that's some great news to home buyers. But the why may not be such great news to, well, all of us. I mentioned that the markets would be looking at the job data from last week very hard, and that could ultimately make rates go up or down. Well, the job data came in and interest rates went down. So if you're playing along at home, then that means that traders are seeing weakness in the economy, which means the Fed won't have any more room to hike rates and could possibly cut them. So what was the weakness? Let's start with this one. 670,000 full-time jobs lost in two months versus 1 million part-time job search. Worst unadjusted August payroll since the Great Depression. It seems that the Bureau of Labor Statistics is, well, trying to play a little game of cat and mouse because they show you great stats on the surface with 187,000 headline payroll number, which is above the 170,000 expectation that sharply revised the last two months downward. This has become a theme for them over the last year. This is almost a funny, well, a truly sad graph. The red lines are all the revisions that the BLS has had to make from the monthly data. In other words, our economy isn't as great as they make it out to be. The deeper dive into the data shows 670,000 full-time jobs lost in just the last two months alone, but that awful number is covered up by that little over 1 million part-time jobs that were filled. So a person loses their full-time job and goes out and gets one or even two part-time jobs to try to make up for it. And this is showing in the unemployment percentages as well. Now, the unemployment rate had a pretty big spike from 3.5% in July to 3.8% in August. If you are there trying to calculate the score, then you have to be thinking to yourself, that a weaker economy means that interest rates are going to go down, right? Well, check this out. Inflation reacceleration risk is real. This is where it all gets confusing and why you can see that the interest rate market is so volatile. I have made it very clear that I don't feel that inflation has been stamped out and that it is going to come roaring back. I've shown the historical precedents, aren't it? And I've also shown the housing and energy cost data to back it up for this time around. But this article digs in a little bit deeper. When corporate profits rise, unions get emboldened to ask for pay raises. It also means consumers are okay with paying higher prices as companies raise them passing through costs to increase profits. Have you noticed all of the unions that are threatening to strike right now? I have. Workers are going to try to get their piece of the increasing pie. There's nothing wrong with that, but more money for the workers means more disposable income, which means more spending, which, well, that means more inflation. The article also noted that unless employment breaks soon, inflation will likely reaccelerate. This would be due to corporate profits turning a corner after a slight slowdown. We saw some employment cracks in the labor data. But well, will the softness in the labor market come quick enough to slow down the soon-to-be roaring back of inflation and thereby higher interest rates? That's my question. Because again, I believe that inflation is coming back and interest rates are going to have to continue to march up if the Fed is truly serious about getting back to inflation at 2%. Want to talk about your own personal real estate needs? Whether you're looking to buy in the next 9 or 90 days, then I would love to chat with you and just find out more about your real estate goals. And if you're thinking about possibly selling, then we can help you traditionally or even offer you a cash offer on your house for a seamless and stress-free sales process. No matter what your situation, we can help you get it done. You can also visit us at youtuberealestateagent.com and fill in your information, and then we will reach out to you. Questions or comments about any of this market data, then throw them in the comments section below. You take the time to watch the video, so I'm going to take the time to respond to you. Until next time.